I don't care if I hurt your feelings. I, I really don't. Somebody look at somebody and say, Pastor, picking on me now. I wouldn't pick on you if you didn't scrape your knee and get a scab on your knee. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. It's important that we understand. This is important that we understand, trying to get it right. If you want your marriage, if you want your relationship with your loved one, your family to work right, you got to keep getting it right. That don't mean they can take advantage of you and say anything and treat you in any kind of way. God called us into holiness, not into weakness, not to be walked upon or treaded upon, but to stand for what is right. Stop contemplating your walk in Christ. Look at somebody and say, this is for me. No, no, say, this is for me. We're so busy trying to get the moke out of somebody else out, we got a big old beam in ours. We're so busy wasting time trying to correct everybody else. Won't you try to correct yourself? You know where I'm from, and y'all, I, I said, you know where I'm from. But you can always tell the morosy men and women because they were always sitting on the front porch with a chair, with a glass of lemonade. Or something spiked in that, in that drink. Always minding somebody else's business. Come on, somebody. And inside the screen door was all kind of hell breaking loose. Before you straighten out somebody else, you and I need to get it right. And when you get it right, keep it right. Well, you know the story, the prodigal son came home, but I want you to get in the frame of mind that the father was in. The father was praying, hoping day and night, where's my son? The scripture don't tell you how long we were gone and what he was doing, other than the fact that he lost all he had and he finally came back home, and his father probably had a lookout post. You know God got a lookout for you, and he see you coming, amen? He see you doing things, amen? He see you coming closer and closer to his throne, amen? And all he's waiting for you to do is to say, yes, Lord, I'm coming home. Yes, Lord, I'm trying to get it right. Yes, Lord, I mean, press and pray through what you're going through. It's important every day and every way that we get it right. And while this man was on his way home, his father probably saw him top the hill. His heart leaped for joy. Don't you know it, it gladdens God's heart when he see you coming? I mean coming without any reservation. Come and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. And when the father saw him, he said, how come my son? Nothing else is important on earth was more important when God see a soul running to him, fighting for their life, standing up for that last day, and that last hour saying, yes, Lord. So them that are acting up and messing up, don't give up on them. Just keep on praying for them. You keep on trying and they're going to see your life. Don't you know the life you have lived over the last 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years of salvation has impacted the lives of those that are around you? Just keep on trying to get it right. Look to somebody and say, keep on trying to get it right. You ever worked on a math problem? Come on, somebody. You worked on it, you thought you had the answer? The teacher said, no, that's wrong. Go back and try again. Come on, somebody. Holiness is just like that. You got to keep on working at it. Sometimes you get it wrong, but you go back and try it again. Sometimes another trial comes in a different way. You keep on trying. And one day you look up and somebody will see you living it just right. Well, you know the story. The father said, kill the fatty calf. Bring my son some shoes. Bring him one of my fine coats. We get ready to have a party because my son has come home. Everybody having a good time. Everybody 
everybody rejoicing. Everybody is happy because a soul has been saved. But the father's mind has never changed about the love for his son or his daughter. But you're going to always find one in the church. Everybody say church. You're going to always find one in the church that when they see something happening, they will always like it. Somebody gets saved, and maybe they go astray. But they may come back a week or two later. But you got to keep praying for them. It ain't time to get no attitude. It ain't time to get mad. It ain't time to get upset. But it's praying time. It's time to tear it for those that need to come back. The only boy got mad. Crossed his arm. Rolled his eyes. Threw his head back. Dad, you ain't never cooked me no fatty cab. You ain't never let me wear one of your rings. You know I love that three-piece suit you got. But you're so protected, you wouldn't even let me wear it. It's amazing how people can think about things, bring up things, say things that come out of their mouth when they can't have their way. Or when things don't go their way. I thought we were growing up. Some of us, when we can't have our way, instead of we acting our age, we act our shoe size. Some of us are eight. Some of us are 10. Some are 12 and 13. Lord, have mercy for those that got a 21 inch foot. I think you're getting my message. Trying to get it right and keep it right. But the father said to the oldest boy, all that I have is thine. And when I die, it's going to be yours. I've always loved you. You see, if we're learning to have the right attitude and stay in harmony with God, recognizing that God has already blessed us, God has already kept us, we don't need to walk around and be mad or be upset. God will take you through what you're going through. And when you have your own trial and tribulation, God will see you through it all. It doesn't matter how difficult it may be. You just keep on living right. You just keep on walking right. You keep on trying to do right. And God will fix anything that needs to be fixed in your life. They had a good time. Because my son that was once lost, now he's found. He was blind, and I hope you don't mind, he was blind as a pork and bean and couldn't see a thing. But now his eyes are open, and now he can see. Sometimes you got to go through something in order for you to see it. Sometimes you got to go through some dark places in life. And sometimes you have to walk alone. But I'm here to tell you, you're never alone. Because God is always with you. And even though time may seem that the hour has tied away, and you don't seem that you're going to find your way back, God always got a guiding hand to lead you back to where he wants you to be. Look at somebody and say, it ain't that bad. That God can't fix it. You see, we can live a life and know the Lord and miss out what God trying to tell us. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying when you look at Thomas, who wasn't there when Jesus appeared the first time, he doubted the resurrection. Jesus told him, I'm going to die and rise again. Now, why would he tell you something he's going to do and never do it? But he did. He did. Yes, he did. And when he appeared to the, those that was in that room, he didn't knock on the door. He was already invited. When he's in your life, you have 
Father opened the door, he just walked right into your life. And he said, ask what you will. Ask what you will. And it shall be granted unto you. Can you imagine that? He just appeared, and the Bible said they were fearful and afraid. And he said, be not afraid, it is I. Handle me and see. Flesh and blood cannot eat and drink like this. But Thomas was not there. So when the disciples said, man, like the old folks said, you ought to have been there. You ought to have been there when the Holy Ghost was pulled out. When the Spirit was moving. And God touched my soul. You ought to have been there. Nobody else can tell you, but you should have been there. Nobody else can tell your testimony, but you. Nobody else can stand up for the gospel, but you. You know what God done for you. Don't let nobody doubt what God done for you. Somebody say amen. And this man, Thomas, heard the disciples saying, man, Jesus is risen. And you know what I like about this story? Thomas had a, a distinct attitude that many today carry. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many people show up at church, but they don't believe in the resurrection. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, Pastor. Yeah. Paul said, I'm betwitched too. Yeah. Every time I do good, evil is present. Yeah. Every time I want to believe something right, the devil tell me something otherwise. There's a war in my members going on. One part want me to believe, and the other part want me to die. You're going to have a battle all the time. But when God said it, God got the manpower and the angel power to back it up. Isn't that so? Mm. Well, you know the story. Thomas wasn't around. But about 11 days later, Jesus showed up again. Now, one thing I love about Thomas, he might not have been there the first time, but he was showed there the second time. Come on, somebody. I think when God pour out his spirit, I want to be there. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm going to keep on trying until I get that spirit on me. I'm going to keep on searching until I get that spirit on me. I'm going to keep on fasting, and I'm going to keep on tarrying, and I'm going to keep on seeking God, and I'm going to keep on being sanctified until I get that spirit on me. Well, he was there the second time around. And it was amazing to me, nobody didn't tell Jesus about Thomas. Jesus already knew about Thomas. Jesus already know about you. He know what you're going through. And before you can speak it, he already working on your behalf. All you got to do is call out to him. When you're having a problem, call out to him. I'm going to tell you, make him the centerpiece of your life. When you got an issue, bring it to him. When you got a problem, bring it to him. When you're going through something, bring it to him. Come on, somebody, help me out this morning. Keep on trying until you get it right. Keep on trying until you get it right. Some of y'all are heavy-handed, and some of y'all are heavy foot. Come on, somebody. But you ought to be heavy-handed in prayer, and you ought to be heavy hand or heavy foot in your walk before the Lord. And keep on pounding the path of righteousness, and God will answer your prayer. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, he was there. And when Jesus showed up and said, Thomas, Thomas, you know, hit the phrase doubting Thomas. Here I am. Give me your hand. Put your hand in the palm of mine. You see those nail scar hands? You see these nail scar feet? You see that spear room in my side? Go ahead on and reach in there. And you can see Thomas. Whatever doubt he had, whatever disbelief that he possessed, 
with him to vanish away. And all he can say was, my God and my Lord. You got to know Christ for yourself. You got to have your experience for yourself. Nobody else can go. There's no go man bar for you. You got to go for yourself. I don't think y'all understand. If you study the life of Thomas, there's a book on Thomas that went up towards the India where they worshiped the water god. And they believed that the glitter from the reflection of the sun was a god. And he tried to convince them that they were one God. And if you go and study the miracles of Thomas, after his conversion, he reached into the ocean and he threw water up and he commanded the water to be suspended. They showed the power of God over nature. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. There's some miracles of Thomas. You have to go and read his life and see the miracles not only that Paul and Peter and the rest of the disciples performed, but they recorded and what God had to do through them to accomplish his will. And that sounds strange and far-fetched. But these were the miracles that he gave God the glory. They're not written here in the Bible. But there are many things that the disciples did that are not written here. But you got to go and search it out. You see, for them able to get through to preach the gospel, he had to define the God that they worship. And Thomas came to be one of the greatest disciples in that part of the world, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you can preach and you can teach, but in those days, you had to back up those words with miracles. Ha. This Thomas went on to do great works, but he had to be convinced don't doubt what God can do. Look at somebody and say, he kept trying until he got it right. You see, Thomas got it right. Peter got it right. Paul got it right. Bartholomew and Matthew got it right. John and Luke. Come on, somebody. The prophets got it right. But they had to keep on trying. They couldn't give up. And the proof that Jesus rose from the dead, it was beyond the disciples. What are you trying to say, Pastor? It was beyond Thomas realizing that Christ lived. The Bible said that Jesus, just so you know, there was no doubt. In the minds of the people, the Bible said that Jesus appeared before 5,000 at one time. So there wouldn't be no discrepancy about his resurrection. You see, 12 people, 20 people, 150 people can get together and they can connive and scheme and plot. And there was no doubt about Christ's resurrection, but Christ wanted to solidify his resurrection and he said, I'll appear before 5,000 at one time. Now, how can a man that was crucified and died and rise again except God be with him? See, Jesus knew when he read the scripture, it was all about him. And he tried and tried, and he got it right. You know how I know he got it right? Because he died for you. And he died for me. He died for all those that will come to him. Just like they are. Don't you be blind. Don't you be whole. Don't you be sick. Don't you be afflicted. Don't you be low. Don't you go astray. Don't you be backbite or backslid. Don't you went back and you ran away. He still died for your sin. And 
And I don't care if you was a little short facts tax collector, a traitor and a publican named Zacchaeus who stole from those who he worked. Come on, somebody. And I want you to understand, he said, Lord, all that I got, ha, I'm going to give back four times. According to the law, you were going to give back two times. He said, I'm going to give back four times. He was a little short man. Nobody didn't like him. Nobody didn't care for him. They didn't want him around. He collected taxes for the Roman Empire. And he was filling up his pockets. But one day, he realized he needed to get it right. Somebody say, get it right. And keep it right. He realized, I can't keep going on like this. The Bible said he heard that Jesus was coming through Jericho. He lived in the city or town of Jericho. He had plenty of money. Born and raised up around the area. But there was a sycamore tree. He used to climb when he was a little boy. Now he's a rich man. And I don't know how long ago he climbed that tree. But he heard Jesus was coming. And he wanted to see Jesus for himself. He couldn't look over the crowd. He couldn't get around the crowd. So he said, I know that Jesus is coming this way. I'll run out and I remember that sycamore tree. Don't y'all look at me like that. Some of y'all that climbed the tree. We had some tom boys in here and some tom girls. So don't look at me like you ain't never climbed the tree before. One thing about climbing a tree. It seems so easy to get up there. But when it's time to come down, come on somebody, you find that your footage is different. You find your frame of mind is different. And sometimes when you get up there, you say, how did I get up here and how am I going to get down? But when Jesus was coming by, looked up and saw Zacchaeus, he was on his way. But he had to stop by a sycamore tree. And we saw Zacchaeus looking over the crowd. He looked up at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus! Zacchaeus! You see, he was calling you when you was up in your tree. Because you thought you were something. You thought you were better than somebody else. In fact, some of y'all walked around with a nosebleed. I didn't hear no amen. amen. This is where I get where I'm getting ready to knock you out. This man thought he was getting away from God. He thought he could do anything he wanted. Treat people any kind of way he wanted. But when God got your number, when God knows where you live, when God knows where you at, God know how to come at you. And if he has to put you on your back to get your attention, God can do that too. All right, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. 
And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.